The state of Nevada does not require homeschoolers to keep records, so why do I do it? Well, I can think of five reasons off the top of my head. One, what if that changes and they pass legislature that requires us to keep records? Two, what if I move to a state that does require it? Three, what if my kiddo wants to do something that requires proof of education, whether general or in a specific subject? Or say they go to public school at the high school level and need approved credits. Four, I want to be able to show them what they accomplished when, should they ask. And five, I like to be able to look back, especially when that homeschool mom guilt rears its ugly head and I'm questioning whether or not I'm doing enough. I like to visually see that we are learning a lot, even on those hard days or those fun days when we don't get to the curriculum or the workbooks. Hi there, I'm Elaine from On The Same Page Together. We are a Christ-centered home of learning and on this channel we talk about all things family. We like to share what works for us as we strive to encourage you on your journey in life and family. We're in our fourth year of homeschooling. We homeschool year round, so we're gonna continue on until July before we end the school year. But I'm so excited to participate in this homeschool show and tell open collaboration hosted by Abby from Rooted in Rest and Jessica from the Waldock Way. I have the whole playlist linked down in the description box and on the end screen of this video so that you can see how other homeschool families do things. If you're a homeschool YouTuber and would like to join the collaboration, I have a link to the information as well. All right, let's get into what records I keep and how. There are actually four levels of detail in my record keeping, and we're going to go through all of them, starting with that eagle's eye overview of the school year down to what we do with curriculum when we're done with it. I like to plan out which curriculum I intend to use for a school year before we start it, and then I type it up in a spreadsheet and print it out for the homeschool binder. I will have a separate page for each child and then group subjects. Then throughout the year, I will write notes such as completion dates, changes, additions, etc. right on the page. I like to keep in my binder like this so that I can see what I set out to do and what actually happened. For our daily work, I don't plan out we're going to do this lesson from this book on this day. We just do the next lesson on the next day that we get to it. And we use a lot of loops. The way I record our daily work has changed over the years, so I'm going to walk you through my journey in case something I did in the past works for you now. I started out with a planner. During our detox period, which I highly recommend if you're pulling a child out of public school, I started just tracking what our days looked like with everyone home so that I could get a feel for them and figure out where I could incorporate school. Once I had that figured out, we started to ease into our homeschool, so I just wrote down what we accomplished. By the time I finished this planner, I wanted things a little more categorized, but I couldn't find a homeschool planner that fit my situation with just two kids at the time. So I created my own tracking sheet. The purpose of my sheet was to record what we did, not what we were planning to do. So I had a column for group work, a column for each kiddo, and then a Saturday box in case we did a field trip or learning or gardening or anything on the weekend. And I really enjoyed being able to write in what we accomplished and visually seeing if a kiddo didn't accomplish something that day. I even found myself writing in Sunday notes at the bottom. When everything hit the fan in 2020, I took on some bonus kiddos online to help their parents make it through the next school year. This meant that we had a very strict schedule for our day and I had more kids to keep track of. So in order to avoid forgetting something or someone, I created a detailed checklist of what we intended to do each week. Some weeks, every box was checked. Some days we missed something. I just marked what we did accomplish by noting the lesson number in the box. When that school year was done, I did not want to keep printing out weekly checklists, so I switched back to a planner, and I just keep track of what we do as a group on one side and what they do individually on the other. In fact, as I'm filming this, I'm realizing that I really liked the separated out columns of what they did individually and as a group so that I could visually see if a child was not getting work done. Hmm, but I don't want to keep printing it out each week. Maybe I should look into homeschool planners again. Do you have any recommendations for planners? If you do, please leave them down in the comments because I think I'm going to be looking for one next. Also, if you want more detailed videos of anything I'm talking about, feel free to let me know. I want to make videos that will serve you. All right, let's talk about experiences, activities, field trips, all of that stuff. Just like the daily stuff, I make note of it in the planner. However, these are things that we typically take pictures or videos of, right? So what I do with those is organize them into two albums. The first one I titled 2021 to 2022 homeschool experience. And then I dump every picture that I have in there that could be homeschool or school or learning related. When they're playing outside for physical education, when we're going on walks for nature study, when we're out hiking, when we're going on a field trip, when we're doing science experiments, cleaning, cooking, all of those life skills, all of that gets dumped in that album. The other album that I make, I titled 2122 Homeschool Yearbook. And in here, I put all of the best pictures, the highlights, the ones that I want to have memories of for years to come. That if I printed a yearbook, that's what I would want in it. And when I have time, it's all ready to go. So I just dump that album into my software, whatever I'm gonna use, and make the yearbook. I've only really had time to make our first year yearbook, but I have hope. 
and I have the album sitting there ready for me when I do have time to make more. Level four of my record keeping is curriculum and art, crafts, all of those things that my children make and do, the paper stuff. Let's start with individual subjects. When a kiddo completes a consumable workbook, I will set them up with a tripod just like the curriculum flip throughs that we film for all of you and let them go through it page by page to capture the work done with any comments, memories, or stories that they might have to go with those pages. I love this because it captures everything they want to share about their experience with the curriculum and puts their little hands and voice in a time capsule for me. Once they're done with the flip through, I pull out any assessment score sheets that I want to keep and put them in my homeschool binder right behind their curriculum overview that I talked about earlier. From there, I want it out of my schoolroom. I would choose to pull out the spiral and recycle the whole thing. My kiddos often want to keep it. So as long as it fits in their dedicated space for storing things, that's up to them. Okay, art, crafts, all of the other cute little paper things that they bring you that are just, they've spent so much time on and are just so cute, but are making piles everywhere and filling up your home, right? Here's what I do with it. I take pictures of them and then I let them go either to be disposed of appropriately or into their personal storage of their stuff. And just like the homeschool experience and the homeschool yearbook albums, I take all of those pictures and put them into their own individual albums per kiddo. And I have them all saved. And someday I hope to have time to go through them and make a book of their art for their homeschool year so that they can just kind of watch their progression through it all. Now, you may be asking me, don't you want to hang on to a couple of things here and there to have and hold when they're gone? and out of the home? No, I really don't. I explained it really well to my friend on Marco Polo when she was telling me that she had no idea what to do with the stacks and stacks of paper of her kids' creations. Let me insert that clip here. I had the thought once, am I gonna be sad later that I don't have any of this physical stuff? Then I realized that when I pick it up and hold it, and I'm looking at it, holding it, I'm gonna have the hurt, sad feelings of that little girl gone. Like the, oh. Look how cute and she's gone. But if it's in a memory book, like our homeschool yearbook and everything, we're just looking through all that fun art and her, you know, it's a very different thing than touching the thing that they touched. I feel like it's going to hurt less for me later. So I'm going to go the picture route. When it comes to group subjects, I just find someone that I can pass it on to when we're done. I would love to hear from you. Is record keeping required in your state? Let me know in the comments, yes or no, and what state you're from. Also, if any of this resonated with you or you have any questions, let's chat. I try to respond quickly and love being a part of your homeschool journey. Here's a playlist with all of our homeschool videos. Don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in this collaboration. And here's a video that YouTube thinks you'll like. Just click on one of these and I'll see you over there.